We have a couple of guests in studio with us. This is, of course, a regular feature we do on Wednesday mornings called Better Health with Trip Family Medicine. And uh, we're joined in studio. Actually, I'll let the doctor do the other introduction, but we're joined in studio by Dr. Jonathan Tripp. You're listening to, of course, Top Story as well on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And uh, the doctor actually has been chatting with me off air a little bit about what we're, we're opening up with. In fact, we're talking about a big upcoming event. And he's got all the details, of course, as usual. And he's on top of his game. <laughs> yes, sir. There we go. Good morning. <laughs> no, we are. Uh, you can tell you're an administrator, too. <laughs> I, I, it shows, huh? <laughs> Hey, we have uh, Gilly Funk from the YMCA. She is the Health and Wellness Director here to help us kick off the uh, YMCA Healthy Kids uh, Day, which is going to be Saturday, and I'm going to let her tell us about that, but we we're happy to have her with us today. Sure. Yeah, thank you so much. It's so fun to, to be here. I don't get to do this kind of stuff very much, so <laughs> it's kind of cool. So the Healthy Kids Day is actually a national Y event, and so it's being celebrated or, you know, all across the nation, uh, over 1,300 different Ys. So it's just a day to get um, kids active and healthy in the community and just let them know what's going on in the community to keep them active in the summer and and through all the months of the year. And so the Y, our Magic Valley Y, we're doing it this Saturday, um, April 25th from 10 to 12. And we've just really tried to reach out to people in the community to try to get um, you know, as many people involved as we can. So these kids can come and experience a free community day where they can go and, and go around to the different booths. They can win it. They can get a t-shirt at the end if they go to a certain amount of uh, visit, certain amount of those places. But we have a doctor trip, of course, with a trip family medical will be there. Um, they're sponsoring the, the event and we just have so many fun things going on. It's going to be an exciting day. You know, I got thinking about your comments about getting the kids involved and I was telling the doctor last week, that's where I learned how to swim was at the YMCA. Really? But yes. But when you're a kid, all you think about is that pool, but there's so much more. In fact, now looking back on it, they had a huge building. The pool was just a small part of it. Right. That there was a lot of a lot of activity going on there. I just didn't see it at the time. It's so interesting. So many people say that to me. Like, I learned to swim at the Y, and I, and I love that. That's such a cool thing. And so we really try hard to um, unite with the community and get, get as many things involved so to show the kids what there is to do. So... We have bounce houses, petting zoo. We have lots of different places uh, of things to do for the kids. Skate land, hop to it, things like that. And just all sorts of fun things. So we're excited. Well, and uh, Saturday, what will be fun for us is we're going to do a booth as part of the uh, Kids Day activities. It's at the Elizabeth Avenue YMCA. I believe it's actually on the tennis courts is where the booth is yes, set up. Yes, yeah. And uh, our booth is going to be called I Made the Cut at Trip Family Medicine, <laughs> and the uh, fun of it is, is where it, it's with the original intent was we'd do some face painting, which we probably will as well, but we took it a step further, and there's a uh, technique for uh, stage makeup called moulage, but it's basically like when uh, the military or other uh, EMS people stage emergencies or accidents, they create a fake injury on the arm or the face or something like that to indicate. Uh, what's happened to the victim, and then they do their routine, their triage. But what we're going to do is make little cuts and create them and, you know, a little bit of fake blood so that, you know, especially I think every boy from about age 4 to 10 is going to be all over that booth, but uh, we'll have some people doing some face painting as well. But I just think that's going to be a lot of fun. And then we even created some Band-Aids that uh, are a sticker, really, that uh, say I made the cut at Trip Family Medicine. So... We're going to have some fun Saturday. Yeah, I love that's that. That's from 10 to 12, right? <laughs> yes, 10 to 12. Awesome. Uh, you know, and that's the thing, you know, you mentioned the Band-Aids. If you're going to do that, you probably should actually copyright it. Yeah, there, yeah. that's a good point. <laughs> there you go. Consider it done. Anybody listening, it's already done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, when you mentioned the different programs at the Y, the whole idea is, I guess, just to get the kids down there. Because once, if you get them active and get them interested, um, it's a lot easier for Dr. Tripp, for instance, to work with them as they grow older. Oh, Yeah. That's the whole goal. <laughs> get kids active in a fun way and get them, get them while they're young, you know? <laughs> if you do that, then they start to act like Dr. Tripp in his office, and that is when kids come into our office, it's my playtime, and uh, it's unlike any other medical office I've ever been to And in the fact that once kids get comfortable, they tend to take over the office, and that's actually my objective, that they get to play. So this whole theme about you know kids activities playing getting out getting away from their 
cell phones and their computers is exactly what we're all about. The NFL has that program, and I see that sometimes in the middle of games, the play 60. Just the notion that if we could get people, the young people, to do 60 minutes of that outside every day without the computer, without an iPad, without television, uh, that it would ra radically change uh, the lives of a great many of them. Yeah, I've got some statistical information, doing a little background for today, that uh, I think will be eye-opening, almost shocking. But uh, at the same time, I want to ask Gilly as the uh, representative mom in the room, since, <laughs> since the two of us really don't fit that. You know, yeah. what, what are the concerns that a mom has, especially when you're looking to your health care provider for information? Well, hold that thought for a moment. We'll take a, we'll take a short break. We've got more coming up. Trip Family Medicine, better health with Trip Family Medicine this morning on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It is 52 at our studios. We're coming up on 840. Hope you can stick around. Wanted to point out we have some guests in studio with us this morning, and uh, they are talking with us about a big event coming up this weekend at the YMCA in Twin Falls. Uh, this is uh, Better Health with Trip Family Medicine until 9 o'clock this morning. You're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And uh, by the way, it's uh, 52 at our studios. Another quick warm up on the way today. It's 844. Dr. Jonathan Tripp, of course, from Trip Family Medicine, and uh, Gilly Funk from uh, YMCA joining us in studio. And uh, doctor, you were mentioning something off air. Uh, we've got to tell people exactly if they need to get a hold of you at the office, how they can go about doing that. Yeah, our uh, telephone number is 208-933-4400. So hopefully easy to remember, 933-4400. You can also contact us at uh, Trip Family Medicine uh, on Facebook and tripfamilymedicine.com is our website. So any of those uh, are good venues. Uh, probably the easiest is a direct phone call. But... Um, we also, uh, I had a question with our uh, guest today. Gilly is uh, a mom, and we were talking before the show about her concerns. So tell, tell us, Gilly, about what would you want to ask your health care provider as far as concerns for keeping your kids healthy? Well, one of the things that immediately came to mind is just as school is winding down, believe it or not, yeah. <laughs> um, just me as a parent trying to think of, how do I keep my kids from sinking into that like video game mode? Because they love it. They love it so much. And I want them to I want to allow them to do those things. But what are some fun ways to keep them them active? Of course, I'm in I'm in that industry too, so I should know lots of things, but I I like to hear other ideas and I know a lot of moms have that concern how to keep them active. Um, do you mind if I share one yeah. of the things my mom used tell, to do? Tell us about what your mom did. Because um, <laughs> as we are talking, I'm like, man, I need to do this actually for my kids. Um, we set up a fun thing in the summer where we would earn points for different activities that we did, whether it's jumping rope or maybe going on a little jog or doing jumping jacks outside in the garage. And we would earn points to be able to go at the end of the week to go to a park or do um, go to the bookstore or something like that. And so it was a super good motivator for us. And even the park would be free. I mean, your kids get to have a park day, a different park every day, every week if they achieve those points. And it worked <laughs> for us. So I need to implement something like that with my own children. But I, I like the incentive part of that, especially when the outcome is benefit for everybody, the kids, the parents. You know, they, they have the benefit all the way along. There's there's no, you know, my kids think, oh, well, the only time we get benefits is when we have to do work. Well, if play is the in, is the work and then play is the outcome, it's all good. I think that's a great plan. Yeah. System of reward, though, really is what it, what it all comes down to. Yeah. That you know if you do something that there is a payoff at some point. Right. Good lesson for life. Yeah, totally. But it still is a concern, you know, because so much of our our fun activities now are just sitting around, yeah. you know, and so as a mom, I just don't want them to be doing that. Yep. And yeah. I'm going to talk a little bit more uh, later about uh, screen time, statistics with obesity, things like that, that okay. uh, will be more specific, but maybe the, tell, there, there were just some other things. Yes, you there brought. was you, another one yeah, that's a big concern, is just um, how do you get kids to, con to eat healthy consistently, and then what what is healthy eating? <laughs> Is, that's a question you get asked, don't you? All the time, yep. yes. Yeah, all the time. And I even struggle with it, too, just like getting my kids to eat healthy when you're on the go and you're running around and busy. And I think that's one of our biggest problems probably in our culture these days is just um, kids not eating healthy and adults not eating healthy, you know? 
So how to get them physically active, how to get them to eat healthy, and oh, by the way, what is healthy? I think those are all great and very typical common questions that are not always easy answers, but I want to thank Gilly for being here. She's uh, We're excited about Saturday. want to announce that again. It's the uh, YMCA Kids Day. Am I saying yeah, that right? Kids Day. Healthy, healthy Kids Day. And it's at the Elizabeth Avenue YMCA from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And uh, be there and see if you can make the cut at Trip Family Medicine. It'll, it'll be a lot of fun. You're welcome to stay and be a spectator, too, if you like. <laughs> okay, I actually got to go teach a class. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> right. But thank you so much. This is really fun. Thanks. Super. Yeah, thank you for uh, dropping by today. Yep. And, and uh, Doctor, we, uh, we, we were talking a little bit earlier about somebody that you work with that uh, is a liaison with me. Uh, who keeps us, I think, uh, well informed about some of the things going on at your office. And I know we had a lot we needed to get to still before we wrap up today. Well, we do. Let me let me kind of hit the uh, the agenda. We're talking about activity levels, the exercise, and getting kids outside, limiting screen time. About the actual nutrition, um, especially some emphasis on whole foods and avoiding processed foods, and uh, the use of either unorganized or organized exercise programs. Things as simple as play days with other kids, other families. Uh, that, like Gilly talked about, going to a park. You know, what better thing to do than take a group of kids and let them have at the park? You mm-hmm. know, that's a great one. Uh, organized sports are often a great way. <clears throat> excuse me for uh, to keep kids busy and involved, uh, and yet I uh, also want to balance that with saying. A home time and being with the parents it has a very key balance that needs to be maintained. It's, we sometimes get into competitive sports and lose sight of the fact that the initial purpose of the sporting activity was to be healthy, not necessarily to be the superstar. And I have some kids that have kind of gone both ways, and sometimes we get stuck in that, uh, oh, you got to get compete to the next level. And other times we say, what are we doing? At the, you know, what, where are we spending our time? So. Activity also can be taken to an extreme, but just every day getting outside is probably a key part of healthy kids. Now, let me go to some other quick topics because when we talk about true health, probably the number one thing on a day-to-day basis that you can try to get a kid to do, and I say try, um, and that is wash their hands before they eat. Because most of the illness that we contract is either breathed in, like somebody coughing and cold, which I'm just finishing up mine from the last two weeks, <laughs> um, or like when we get nausea, vomiting, diarrhea kind of stuff, that's usually a virus that we put in our own mouth by touching some other surface and then eating and not washing our hands. So washing hands. And the other one for me would be dental hygiene because there's a great connection or big connection between uh, oral hygiene and long-term health, which is a whole topic we could talk about another time. But if kids have decent oral hygiene, they tend to be sick less often. And so that's true health and illness uh, comparisons. But when we talk about long-term health from how's their heart going to be, you know, how are their lungs going to work, and how are their muscles going to do? You had an example of a guy, a college roommate. I think you ought to tell us about that. Yeah, he, uh, he, he, uh, he had a pretty sedentary lifestyle as a, as a child, and then he, he got a job before he actually came to college as a rustabout in Wyoming and found himself to be terribly sore after the first two, three weeks on the job because of all of the activity. But then, within two or three weeks after that, the soreness went away. So when he left, he realized that he had stimulated those muscles, he would he took up a workout regimen, 400 push-ups a day, 400 sit-ups, and 400 uh, jump ropes, or uh, repetitions jump roping. It just it changed his life. And and the truth is, is I've never done 400 push-ups or sit-ups or jump ropes in a day. So I don't want to portray the idea that, you know, that's, that's where you got to be to be considered healthy. But what he found is he had new physical abilities after his work activities and said, I want to keep this. This is a level I never was at growing up. And so we want kids to appreciate what their bodies can do by being outside more often. And it's true at first, if they're used to being on a video game or their their uh, cell phone or watching movies, the initial going running and playing tag wears them out. And they're not really excited about it, at least initially. But pretty quickly, their body overcomes the initial trouble and they start loving the outside. And I think that's huge for the physical body. 
but in particular screen time is a big problem with brain stimulation and actually struggles with other academics if we do a lot of screen time that is not uh, academic oriented. I know with my own daughter when she would be outside and she was playing with the kids, whether it be tag or whatever they were doing, if she did that for a good hour a day, maybe a little bit more than that, it also she slept much better at night too. Absolutely. Oh, we find that so much, especially with adults uh, that have sedentary, you know, they're, they're too busy at work or too busy doing this or that, but they can't sleep at night because they can't turn their brain off. And if you get them to do even 20 minutes a day, they sleep so much better. And their health improves because their blood sugar goes down, their blood pressure goes down, their weight tends to drop. Amazing what happens with even 20 minutes a day. But the recommendation for the kids is get them moving for 60 minutes a day. It doesn't have to be all at the same time. But, you know, why not? We, we, we have parents in some situations who I think they have to rely on, uh, what do they call them, latchkey kids, though, because you've got single-family homes and the like. And it's difficult sometimes for those parents to try and, I guess, Do motivate it. the children. Yeah. They're not there. Or, But I got thinking about what uh, Gilly mentioned about the reward system, and maybe you can still figure out a way that they could be getting some activity even when you aren't there yeah. at, at, the, at the house. And it could be a simple reporting system. You know, it's it, it doesn't have to be a, a big bureaucratic nightmare. It can be simply given three choices and say, when you do this, you you know, you get this reward, or you get these many points, and then we'll get this reward. You know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, high school, we'd have a teacher that would say, you know, if everybody does this kind of a grade, or we average this kind of a test score, we'll do a class party and get pizza, you know. And so I'm not saying pizza is the answer. In fact, another fun activity with a single parent is probably the biggest motivator to the child. So... That time is very short and very tough to get a hold of as a single parent. And so if the reward is doing something with that parent, I bet you'll see great motivation in those kids. It's a surprise. You you think you're doing everything to keep them intact and clothed and dressed, and often what they really want is your time. Dr. Jonathan Tripp in studio with us. Uh, Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine today. It's coming up on 855-53 at our studios. And you're listening to Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com uh, with Bill Colley as well. Uh, once again, that contact information for people who'd like to reach you at the office. And really, in this day and age, the great thing about the Internet is it gives you a couple of additional opportunities for that outreach. Yeah. No, in fact, uh, our website, tripfamilymedicine.com, uh, Facebook is a lot of fun because you get to see posting of others and their opinions, and you know we don't filter that at all. So it's Trip Family Medicine on Facebook, and then our phone number at our office is nine three three forty four hundred, and uh, any of those would be great ways to contact us. I know a lot of people I'm meeting are telling me, especially newcomers to well, as I am to a community like this, but a lot of people are telling me they're getting they're finding more and more difficult to find somebody in primary care. Yes, but your office. The door is still open. Oh, very much so. We're taking new patients. In fact, we're currently actively recruiting uh, another uh, health care provider, whether that's a nurse practitioner or physician assistant. We have myself and uh, Russell Singleton, who's there three days a week. And uh, we're uh, in the mode of at least filling up two more days a week or a full-time person. So as we go through the summer and into the fall, uh, the growth of the office will just continue. We, we definitely have the demand. Uh, new patients every day are much higher than any other, other office I've ever been in. Well, that's, and people, whether, I don't, I'm irrelevant of how people feel about certain changes in health care and law. Uh, it, it has created a situation where uh, there is a crunch out there. And so people are looking, in many cases, yeah. for that new office. Yeah, they're, they're struggling to find anybody they can get into in any reasonable time. One of our, uh, shall we say, operating modes is that, or uh, mottos is, if you're sick or you're hurt, we get you in the same day or the next day. And that's, you know, other than walking to the emergency room, that's almost unheard of in a medical office. So we really are motivated to say, this is the place to come when you're hurt, when you're sick, when you have other concerns. And, and we range the gamut from, you know, cuts and bumps and bruises to, you know, newly diagnosed cancers, and, and I'm not inviting that, believe me, but it, well, my statement is is when you have bad news, it's, it's better to have it from somebody that you've got a little establishment with, a little rapport, 
and our office is frankly you know in a in a great way the personality of the office is very receptive and very uh family oriented i was going to say uh, uh not an easy uh, job to tell somebody that but you know what they need to know it too as well yeah no that's the hardest part of my job ever is to tell somebody about that we need to wrap up uh very quickly uh can you give us a hint maybe at next week what we might be talking about well, it is about being healthy, and we're going to talk about antibiotics and their use, sometimes their abuse. And I think one of the greatest parts of that topic is is they don't cure everything. You know, often we walk in and think, hey, all I need is an antibiotic for whatever ails me, and often it won't do a thing for you. So we're going to educate you on that. I wish I had more time to talk about the whole foods with the kids, but uh, that is probably an emphasis of how to keep your kids eating healthy is look for non-processed. But uh, happy to hear from moms by Facebook or uh, just come to the office. Bring your kids. We'd love to see them. We'll get to Whole Foods one of these uh, weekends or weeks, rather. Uh, That's coming up uh, sometime in the near future, next Wednesday, in fact. More details on that throughout the week, of course, too, as well. In the meantime, 9 o'clock news coming up, followed by a visit from the Twin Falls City Council.